1860 in England, and everyone's talking about one thing. The cotton famine. There's an overproduction of cotton, which has caused a complete decline in the economy, and a lot of problems for everybody in 1860s England. It's kind of really, it's kind of really hard for them to go back to regular 1860s in England life of, you know, making cotton, I guess. But one man named Thomas Bradshaw decides that he's had enough of the cotton famine. It hasn't been solved yet, but he decided that he personally has had enough. And he says that he has made a little circle that you spin around on. Got this tiny little horse, you spin around on it. You go pretty fast, not like really fast, but like pretty fast, faster than usual. Calls up a carousel and it takes off like a rocket. Everyone loves the carousel. People loved circles back then. I guess that's how the wheel got invented. Smash cut to 1893 at the World Columbian Exposition in Chicago, Illinois. Now what happened at the World Columbian Exposition in Chicago, Illinois? I'll tell you, thank you for asking. The Ferris wheel was invented. If you don't know what a Ferris wheel is, it's like if you took Mr. Bradshaw's carousel and just kind of, just kind of twisted it. It goes up instead of sideways. It's still a circle, but circles were kind of big back then. And people loved it, people loved the Ferris wheel. I'm sure there's something else big that happened at the Columbia Exposition, but the Ferris wheel is the main thing. At least, for pe people who are into circles and all. I don't know what you're thinking. It's the current day, and I personally am not that into circles anymore. Like, they were cool, but I'm kind of over it. I have a solution for you. Let's head back down to Blackpool, England, otherwise known as the Florida of England, where you like visiting, but you don't really want to stay there because there's high crime rates. They both have high crime rates, kind of like how Lincoln's secretary was named Kennedy. We're down in Blackpool, England, and they have a thing called trolley parks. Trolley parks um, are what we in the business call cars. They're, they're cars. They're just cars that take you from one place to the next. Street cars, if you will. But these were lines. And while everyone in America is freaking out over these circles, people in England, at least in Blackpool, England, are loving these lines. They get in. Go to your destination, get back, go back home, works perfectly. It's probably not faster than walking, but it's a whole lot more fun, and they love it. So, some people in America see that England's kind of taking off with this whole trolley park thing right now, and they kind of love it too. They look at this big circle they've built and they think, circles? <laughs> Who's thinking about circles anymore? It's all about lines now. Atlantic City and Coney Island start getting all about those lines. That's right, we got three, count them, one, two, three trolley parks. It's really taken off now, but trolley parks are normalized now. And everybody liked trolley parks before they were cool, but now they're cool and no one wants to do them anymore. So how do we respond to that? Easy, we add more to it. Trolley parks, who <laughs> are trolley parks? Now we got boardwalks, dance halls, sport fields, and boat rides. Boat rides. You know, for these places that were on the beach, so they were already by the water, but... I guess we need to have dance halls before people were like, hey, let's maybe go in that water. Boat rides. Now, remember Coney Island from about a minute ago? Well, Coney Island's kind of taken off right now. Coney Island sees your boat rides and your your board walks and raises you this. We're still on lines, but you put a cart on the line, it goes across a complicated line, maybe twist a little bit. They call that the amusement park. So if we start by opening up Sea Lion Park. Now what's different about Sea Lion Park than any other park we've seen so far? Obviously, it's these, these line carts they're making, but Sea Lion Park also costs money. I think Sea Lion Parks are like a domino effect to make everything cost money, and I blame Sea Lion Park for me having $18 in my bank account. Speaking of domino effects, Sea Lion Park's idea of this modern amusement park is already taking off. Boom. Now we have Steeplechase Park. A new modern amusement park with the same rides you know and love, the same prices you know, and it's opening up right in the convenient location, Coney Island. We have two modern amusement parks on Coney Island and none anywhere else. It's a Coney Island thing now. What's that? Oh, that's it. Two more parks just opened. Dreamland and Luna Park. Both also in Coney Island. But here's the thing about Luna Park. 
the Luna Park's starting to become kind of a worldwide thing. You got Luna Park's popping up all over the United States. It's great. It's really, really good for people. <laughs> but what's that? <laughs> Coney Island didn't come up with this idea. That's right, baby. We're going back to England. Because down in England, back in Blackpool, if you recall Blackpool, Florida of the UK, they have what's called the Blackpool Pleasure Beach, which is not as fun of a name as Sea Lion Park, but granted, they made up for these not so fun names in 1904 when they introduced <clears throat> Sir Hiram Maxim's Captive Flying Machine. Now those are some words I really like to hear. Sir Hiram Maxim's Captive Flying Machine was basically so her maximum captive flying machine was essentially all these small little planes that go around central axis, spinning around kind of fast, going up and down. You can see these at a lot of amusement parks these days. They're not called the same six word thing, but they are Sir Her Maxim's captive flying machine. Now, how do you make this? Sir Maxim over here, he tried to create a plane and he failed at it. He did so bad at it that the plane wouldn't fly. So he figured he'd take all these empty plane shells he has and he just Put them on something. Spins around super fast. Well, again, not super fast, but like carousel fast. So now we got the Blackpool Pleasure Beach down in England. We got all kinds of Luna Parks opening everywhere. Four different amusement parks in Coney Island. Nothing could go wrong, right? Wrong. Because these things caught on fire literally all the time. You don't know why they caught on fire literally all the time? Because they were made out of wood. An exact quote from Wikipedia says that Dreamland was the first Coney Island amusement park to completely burn down. The first. Additionally, uh, Luna Park started burning down all around the world, but we'll give designers credit on that one. Not all of them were because of faulty wiring or faulty design. Some of these were because of arson. So, good news for the designers. However, there's a silver lining to all of this. Well, like, actually more of a golden lining. Because this was the last event before the golden age of amusement parks. So now we're in the golden age of amusement parks, which means that Americans are working less and have more time on their hands. So they're rolling up their sleeves and they're going out on the weekends. What are we doing on the weekends? Easy, one of two things. They are either going to an amusement park or burning down an amusement park because the arson thing is totally still on. That's more of a smaller problem right now because we're having a great time at the amusement parks when they're not in mortal peril. But speaking of mortal peril, one change that's happened in these amusement parks is these new extreme drops. Americans have this new feeling in the amusement parks that they are in danger whenever they're on a roller coaster, and they love that. They love going down these huge hills and feeling like they might die, which means that the arson might have actually been a feature of the amusement parks. Another thing that's happening now is the addition of kiddie rides. Kiddie rides are sections or whole parks designed just for children so that the parents can go leave the kids at the kiddie parks and go commit arson at the big parks. These kiddie parks they didn't really take off immediately. In fact, they didn't really take off at all until after World War II. Speaking of World War II, let's talk about World War II. World War II was not a good time for amusement parks. I mean, obviously, it shouldn't really be like that necessary to say, but World War II was not good for the entertainment industry in general. World War II brought with it the Great Depression, and with the Great Depression, people were not able to have any extra money to spend to go on extreme drops as much as they may want to. Not even Sir Her Maxim's flying machine. Truly one of the great American tragedies. Obviously, not many parks survived this. A lot of parks end up having to close their doors forever due to a lack of sales, Lack of workers, lack of a lot of things. The most notably of this being Steeplechase Park. Now I'm gonna take a moment of silence for Steeplechase Park. Thank you. I always remember Steeplechase Park as being the second park to open in Coney Island and one of the only ones to not burn down. Good job, Steeplechase Park, except, yeah, didn't want to make it that far. So now we're down to just two Coney Island parks left. 
Sea Lion Park is still going strong. And Luna Park is still going. Not as strong, it burnt down once, but we rebuilt it and it's stronger. But World War II is coming to a close. The economy is restoring itself, and we're ready for a new era of amusement parks. Get ready for the post-World War II era. World War II is over! So now we're onto the post-World War II era of amusement parks, which is incredibly successful, so good for them. And now, in this era, we have those parks that you actually know. So we got Disney World, we got Universal, we got count them, one, two, three, four, five, six flags. We have Wally World, we have Legoland, we even have the Mall of America, which is technically an amusement park, so congratulations, Mall of America, you win the amusement park award for being an amusement park. It's the American dream. But now, we're great. World War II is over. The Great Depression is over. We're in economic recession. Everything's perfect. It's 2019, the turn of the decade, and nothing bad could ever happen again. Uh-oh, global pandemic time. A global pandemic is obviously not good for amusement parks. Once again, don't think I need to say that, but as of right now, amusement parks are closed down. And when they open, we don't know how or when that's going to happen. One thing's for sure, it will be different than how we've seen them before. Right now, amusement park owners are scrambling to figure out how to fix this problem. How can they reopen in a way that prevents disease spread? I don't know if any of you are watching this right now, but if you are, listen up to this next part, because I have a few ideas. First of all, my first idea, second person amusement park. Now, obviously, first person, you're actually there. Third person, you're watching someone else do it. We're all clear on that. Third person could work too, but I think the real money is in second person amusement parks. For just 60 an hour, I say you should be able to have someone come into your house and read you what it would be like to be on that amusement park ride. Putting your hands in the air is encouraged, but not required. My second choice... Probably limited access. I know, you guys are already on this. You guys are already talking about only allowing 20-30% of what you usually allow in at the parks. And I think it's a fantastic initiative, an incredible first step, but at some point we gotta take the second step. And here's my goal for that. I say no more than one person in the park at a time, which I know, I know before you say, oh, there's some problems in there, I get it. What if me, what if I wanna go to the park and my friend wants to go to the park at the same time, what are we gonna do then? Just think for a second. Obviously, we don't go one person per park. There's like probably like 12 parks out there. We need more parks, so obviously, we go one park per person. If you want to go to Disney World, you get Disney World built up in your front lawn. That's your problem now. You shouldn't have to say that. It's so obvious. My third choice, uh, my third and final, and probably easiest and best choice, honestly. It's a laundry basket on a treadmill. It delivers classic thrills that you can see in any theme park from the comfort of your own home or local gym. There's some guy pumping iron to your left, and right where you are, you got fun for the whole family. If that guy is tired, he can join in too. You can go sit in that laundry basket and go down a treadmill. Get the extreme drops that you miss by falling off a treadmill. You don't even need a laundry basket. You can do that on your own if you want. So that was my open letter to uh, top amusement park people. But if you're not one of them, this is what I have to say to you, the common man. What have we learned from today? What is the one big takeaway we can take from this video? Obviously, it's don't ever build anything out of wood, ever. You are leaving way too many doors open. Thank you all for watching this video. Um, this is, it was weird to film this. I've never done anything like this before. So if you have any uh, feedback you'd like to give, please comment it down below. I'm really open for improvement on this one. This is kind of just more of a first try than anything. Um, but if you liked it, make sure you subscribe. Really help me out. And uh, check out the links in my about page. There's uh, Twitter, Instagram, and my online clothing brand, uh, New Retro Clothing. So yeah, it'd be really cool if you could check any of those things out. If not, no problem. Still love you. <laughs>